northeast of Lafayette, Indiana, is a place called Prophetstown. At one time, this plain was a huge village filled with hundreds of dwellings, Shawnee Indians, and a large confederation of other tribes. It was led by Shawnee Chief Tecumseh and his brother, the mystical, spiritual leader known as the Prophet. Some say that the Prophet put a curse on William Henry Harrison, and every single American president that's been inaugurated 20 years thereafter. The curse? They would die in office. And strangely, this sinister magic seems to have done its work since 1840. This is the very strange story of Tecumseh's curse. It was the early 1800s before Indiana was even a state. Indiana Territory Governor William Henry Harrison was living at Vincennes in this beautiful home, now known as Grassland. His charge from the president was to acquire land from the Indians and expand the borders of the United States. He made many treaties with tribes, giving them money, goods, and trading them tracts of land out west. But Shawnee Chief Tecumseh said that these tribes had no authority to sell this land to the United States. In 1810, with several hundred warriors, he went to talk with Harrison on his turf. To say it didn't go well is an understatement. Tecumseh ended up pulling out his tomahawk and Harrison his sword. It's said that the only thing that ended a fight to the death was the sound of Harrison's men cocking their rifles. Neither man trusted each other, nor was willing to compromise. It would lead to the bloodshed of not just two men, but hundreds. Tecumseh and the Prophet, known as Tenskwatawa, pulled together a large confederation of tribes with the intent of taking back land given to Harrison and halting U.S. expansion. The people of Prophetstown believed that the Prophet had magical powers and performed miracles. He was the unquestioned spiritual leader and this only strengthened the alliance as they believed he could provide supernatural guidance. However, from Vincennes, William Henry Harrison mocked the prophet. He tried to discredit him and dissolve the Indian resolve at Prophetstown, supposedly saying, if the prophet has magic, let him turn the daytime into night. But that was a huge mistake. The prophet was told of Harrison's challenge and correctly predicted a solar eclipse. When the daytime magically turned to night, everyone thought that the Great Spirit was with the Prophet, and with his divine power, they could absolutely win any battle. Established along the Wabash and Tippecanoe River, Prophetstown grew bigger and bigger as Tecumseh gave fiery speeches to tribes across the land. He was gone long periods, and Harrison saw this as an opportunity to attack Prophetstown. Even though his military days were long over, Harrison asked the president to reinstate his command and took troops to attack the Prophet while Tecumseh was away. On November 6th, 1811, Harrison and about 1,000 soldiers camped at what's now known as Battleground under a mile and a half from Prophetstown. He sent word to the Prophet that he'd like to meet in the morning, but that meeting never came. Under a waning gibbous moon, Tenskwatawa told the warriors that they would instead 
attack Harrison's men in the night, and that his magic would protect them from any bullets or harm. They would be invincible, and victory was assured. They attacked at 4 a.m., taking Harrison's men by surprise. The battle lasted two hours, but ended with the prophet and the warriors retreating. 37 of Harrison's men died in battle, with 25 dying later from their wounds. It's estimated that over 50 warriors were killed. Regrouping at Prophetstown, the warriors confronted the prophet, saying his magic did not work. Tenskwatawa said that he would make new magic and they could finish what they started, but the damage was already done. The warriors and their families fled Prophetstown and Tenskwatawa's leadership was done. On the next day, Harrison's men went to Prophetstown and found it abandoned, except for an elderly woman that was too sick to travel. Harrison ordered the storehouse of winter food and hundreds of dwellings to be burned to the ground. The dream of Prophetstown was over. Now known as the Battle of Tippecanoe, it was a decisive victory for Harrison and United States expansion. While it wasn't the end of Tecumseh, it was the end of the Prophet's rule and influence and the stronghold of Prophetstown. The War of 1812 would follow, with Tecumseh pulling together a large confederation of warriors and aligning with the British. But on October 5th, 1813, Harrison and about 4,000 soldiers confronted Tecumseh and the British allies at Ontario, Canada. It would be called the Battle of the Thames. Tecumseh was killed, and the warriors that followed him scattered. Harrison would be known as the hero of Tippecanoe and for defeating the mighty Tecumseh. He would use these military victories and popularity as stepping stones to become President of the United States. But in the shadows, a humiliated and resentful prophet sought vengeance for Prophetstown and for killing his brother, Tecumseh. It's said that he assembled powerful dark magic, a curse, on not only William Henry Harrison, but every American president after him, each 20 years. These presidents either died in office or came very close to it. These uncanny string of coincidences started in 1840 and have continued to modern times. William Henry Harrison exploited his victories over the Prophet and Tecumseh. His presidential campaign was called Tippecanoe and Tyler II, with John Tyler as his vice president. It was good marketing. He defeated Martin Van Buren and was elected president in 1840. On March 4, 1841, he gave the longest inauguration speech in American history, lasting nearly two hours. It was a cold, wet day, and he didn't even bother to wear a hat or overcoat. He later did a parade and greeted guests for three hours before doing three inaugural parties that night. He was a pretty tough guy. But on March 24th, he took a walk that ended in a downpour. He was again not wearing a hat or overcoat. When he returned to the White House, he didn't bother to change out of his wet clothes. A few days later, he was sick. He was bedridden by March 26th, with doctors trying to cure his cold-like symptoms. No matter what they did, he became progressively worse. Just nine days after he felt sick, he died on April 4th, 1841, of pneumonia. 
He was the first president to ever die in office, and he only had the job 31 days, also a record. Afterward, a string of very strange coincidences happened to other presidents. 20 years after Harrison was elected, Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860. On April 15, 1865, he died in office, the victim of assassination. 20 years after Lincoln was elected in 1860, James Garfield was elected president in 1880. On September 19, 1881, he was dead, also the victim of assassination. 20 years after Garfield was elected in 1880, William McKinley was elected in 1900 for a second term. On September 14, 1901, he was dead, yet another victim of assassination. And the scary coincidences continued. Warren G. Harding was elected in 1920, the next 20-year cycle, and died in office of a heart attack. Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected in 1940 and died in office of a cerebral hemorrhage. John F. Kennedy was elected in 1960, the next 20-year cycle, and also died in office, the victim of assassination. It was not until Ronald Reagan was elected in 1980, the next 20-year cycle, that a president did not die in office. However, in 1981, he was shot by an assassin and recovered. Well out of office, he died of pneumonia, strangely, just like William Henry Harrison. George W. Bush was elected in 2000, the next 20-year cycle, and also did not die in office. However, during his second term, while giving a speech in 2005, a man threw a live hand grenade in front of him. The only reason it didn't detonate was because the handkerchief that was hiding it was wrapped too tightly and the safety lever did not detach. As of October 2022, he's very much alive. Joe Biden was elected in 2020, the next 20 year cycle, and is currently alive as of this production. Given the long history of death and near death misfortune each 20 years, you can only wonder if he worries just a little bit at night. By 2040, a new president will fall into the 20 year cycle. We can only offer wear a coat if it's cold outside, keep your doctor appointments, and by all means, keep your head down. Whatever steps we take in this life, we all have the same fate. Whether we live a short time or long time, live a simple or extraordinary life, we should treat people like we want to be treated. Someday, the door of this life will close behind us and it will never open again. And all people will remember is your name, how you lived, and how you treated them. People won't know what was in your heart unless you were brave enough to show it. And they won't know you were sorry unless you opened your mouth and told them. In the end, after all the struggle, choices, and drama, we're just a name with two dates. But whether we become the president or just someone the people finally remember, make the most of what's between those two dates. Sometimes, the only curse we have 
is how we chose to live.